thanks for checking another edition of Driving with Miranda on the Car Guide. As you can see, this week, I finally got the chance to get behind the wheel of the big boy Bronco. This is the Wild Track Edition, top of the food chain when it comes to Broncos. Now, we didn't have a whole lot of snow this week, but I got to play a little bit. Let's find out what this Bronco is all about. <laughs> So I waited quite a while to drive this big boy Bronco. And I had the Bronco Sport a couple of months ago in the summer. Um, it was a lot of fun, great vehicle, really well designed inside and out, super fun to drive. But of course this Bronco is what everybody's been talking about and the one that's getting all of the attention. And there's a reason for that. So I call it the big boy because it is actually quite large. <laughs> Definitely bigger than the Sport, sits a lot higher. I have the Wild Track Edition, which is the top of the food chain, most expensive, most kitted out version of the Bronco that you can currently get. So what that means basically is you get all the standard Bronco stuff, but I have 35 inch rubber around 17 inch beadlock capable wheels. I have front and rear locking differentials and I have Bilstein position sensitive monotube shocks. So this thing was built for off road life. <laughs> uh, I have my GOAT modes, my GOAT modes, greatest of all time, of course. Um, <laughs> a play on the terrain response system that Land Rover has and a couple of other uh, off road companies. But basically, I can switch it up down here by the shifter, and I have everything from eco to sport to slippery to Baja mode, which changes up a whole bunch of stuff. And go crazy uh, with the doors off, of course, in a Baja setting. <laughs> now this is direct competition with the Jeep Wrangler. And you know, I've driven a lot of Wranglers over the years. And I gotta say, the first thing I noticed about the Bronco is how much more comfortable it is to be in this vehicle. So I don't know if you can see the camera shaking. It definitely is. I'm on a rough road right now. And I did this on purpose to come here. Um, while the camera might be vibrating, I'm not. <laughs> it's absorbing all of that, all those imperfections. And it has a lot to do with the big rubber as well. That makes it a little bit more comfortable. But even a Wrangler on big wheels always just feels like you're being beat up behind the wheel. And I don't feel that in this Bronco. And I haven't felt that all week. Now, in terms of performance, this thing has a 2.7 liter EcoBoost engine that's good for 310 horsepower and 400 pound foot of torque. And I have a 10 speed automatic transmission. Now, you would think that an engine that, that's that small and, and uh, efficient, because it's an EcoBoost, right? EcoBoost, like, you know, I've got a turbo in there. So it gives me a little bit of oomph at the same time as supposedly saving me money at the pumps. But, um, I've averaged this week 15.1, it just went down, 15.1 liters per 100 kilometers. That is significantly high. <laughs> um, and I really didn't do a lot of, of suburban driving. I did very little um, small journeys, it was all highway. So I figured that by the end of the week, I would have it down at least in the 13s, 14s. And I was well behaved, not a heavy foot, because this is a big vehicle, and just like the Wrangler, it's like driving a box down the highway. So it gets very loud, <laughs> very quickly, because it's just air hitting a wall, which is the Bronco. Not super aerodynamic, not at all. A couple of times uh, in the car, my son and boyfriend both asked if one of the windows was down while we were driving, because there's so much air noise that it sounds like something is open when it's actually not. Other than that, super fun to drive. I wish I'd had more snow um, and bad weather for this, uh, just to experience what it would be like. Obviously it has a great ride height, don't have to worry about that. You can definitely easily go over snow drifts and piles, and, and especially with this uh, wheel and rubber setup. This thing's equipped to, to handle it all. Um, but you know, even in normal weather and you know sunny days and on regular driving surfaces, this thing is, is a lot of fun. Um, gas prices aside, I don't know that I'm not super looking forward to going to the gas station, but it has to be done. Um, in terms of interior space, great. I really like the interior of this. Again, it's just that little step up from the Wrangler. Although the new Wrangler really does have a nice interior. They did step it up there. But this, I like the color combo. Um, super cool uh, grab handles on the side with Bronco etched in them. Nice 
soft touch rubber there. Everything looks to be cleanable, wipe downable. So if you do decide to remove the doors and the roof, which you can do in this, you can't put the windscreen forward like you can on some Wrangler models, but you can take everything else off. Um, and of course it has the option of either the hard top or a soft top. I've got the hard top on right now, which apparently is super easy to remove. I didn't remove it because I'm not a brave Canadian and you know, temperatures in the minus mean no more roofs coming off cars that can do that. So it has two panels up here in the front and then one big one in the back. Now, I think I would probably be able to get the two panels off in the front by myself, but the back one might be a little bit heavy for me to do solo, so it's likely a two-man job. Um, of course, you have the nice wide opening tailgate in the back, the glass that flips up should you need it to for extra storage out the back for all of those fun adventure items that you will inevitably have if you own a Bronco Wild Track. <laughs> in the back seat, plenty of room, sun never complained. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's almost got this like, I feel 70s, 80s era feel with the leather, the way it's designed with the kind of beige and black. It's old school retro-y, not in a bad way though, in like a kind of cool way. So I really like the interior in here. They did a great job. And then of course the exterior. This thing looks, excuse my French, badass. It's big. I've got the big black push bar in the front. That's part of the Wild Track package. I've got the big uh, black wheel well uh, covers out the side. Again, part of uh, the Wild Track pack. Everything about this car is big and imposing and in your face. And, and it gets some serious attention on the road. I mean, the Bronco Sport does too, but this one, just because it seems so wide and so big and so truck-like, and they've just done a really good job designing something that's gonna to appeal to the buyer of this vehicle. Um, and I love this color. Like I said before, you know, dress a, a vehicle in this mossy minty green color and you're automatically gonna win me over. So they just need to keep bringing out all the cars in this color. And even though it's like a muted, a bit diluted color, it doesn't take away from the Bronco's exterior look. I really do like it. And of course you got the big wheel up the back and the possibility of having roof rails if you want. The side steps are, are functional without getting in the way either. I mean, they're a little bit small and, and it's not so high that you need them, but it is nice to have them there just in case. Plus you've got the grab handles, so it's all, you don't have to hang on to the steering wheel getting in or I don't have to, I use the side handle. And so it's all in all a really good design. In terms of pricing, so not only is the Bronco big boy big in size, <laughs> it's kind of big in price. So this particular model that I have, the Wild Track, starts at just under $50,000. Now you can get a base Bronco two-door starting at $29,300, I believe. But if you want all the bells and whistles, the four doors, the extra Wild Track stuff, the off-roading, the locking differentials, the, all of that stuff, then you're gonna have to pony up and add a little bit more to the pot for the price. Do I think it's worth it? Yes and no. I mean, you can get a Wrangler or you can just get the base two-door Bronco if really all you're looking for is something that can go off-road, take you to the cottage, be efficient in the winter, plus, you know, have a little bit of fun in the summer with the top off and the doors gone, <laughs> then you don't need to check all the option boxes and you don't need the four doors. You can still seat five people in the two-door Bronco. You're just going to have to struggle a little bit to get in and out of the back seat. So I don't know that it's worth the $30,000 price difference between the base and this one. I've not driven the base one yet though, so don't hold me to that. I'm <laughs> just saying you have options. All right, guys, well, that's been it for me in the Ford Bronco Wild Track. I definitely had fun in this one this week. Uh, thanks so much for checking it out. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, you can hit me up at Miss Miranda L on Twitter or Instagram, Miranda Lightstone at Facebook.com, or you can drop a comment below and I will do my best to get back to you. Thanks again, guys, and have a great week.